I know last year around this time, I was like, oh, people should just put up their lights and do whatever they want to do because we're not going anywhere. But does anybody else feel like it's too early to be putting up lights? I don't know. I say this as um, someone who, in our house, we have put ours up. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not really mad at it. I'm just wondering... Is it too early? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the same as last year. It's like, just do what makes you happy. And let's keep pushing on. Shall we? Oof. Here we go, y'all. Take 30. What's good, peacemakers? Welcome back to another episode of the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast. I'm Michael, and this is my crafty corner of the YouTube-verse. Uh, to any returning viewers, welcome back. To anyone who is new, welcome, welcome. I got some new subscribers since the last time we were all together, so welcome. So happy you're here. And if this is also your first time watching and you enjoy the content, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Uh, so you can know about future episodes, things like that. Uh, a couple of things. I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, a couple of things that I forgot the last episode because uh, hashtag mess. Um, one is I did an interview with Irina over on the Fiber Chats channel here on YouTube. I don't remember which number I was. 70 something. Uh, but it came out a couple weeks ago, and I meant to mention it the last time I podcasted, but completely forgot. Um, so I will link that chat um, to the conversation that we had down below. Feel free to go over there and check it out. Show her some support and some love. She has some wonderful interviews over on her channel with like tons and tons of people from designers to just makers in the community. Um, yeah, it was a really lovely chat. I had a great time. She's so sweet. And yeah, it was just really dope to sit and laugh with someone else <laughs> instead of just looking into uh, my phone and chatting by myself and pretending like you all are answering me in my head, which maybe I shouldn't admit out loud. So that's one. <laughs> Go check out uh, Fiber Chats. Uh, you can click the link below. Second thing, and I'll have something to show for it, is uh, Denise Byron of Byron Handmade is currently running a make-along for her grounded ponchette, but she has a hack to it in the pattern where you can make it a poncho. She's posted it on her um, Instagram feed, and it was really dope, and she's, as always, or yeah, I'm going to say as always, uh, is doing <laughs> Zoom meetups while the knit along is going on. So yesterday, and I'm helping to moderate those. So if you want to jump on in, we have two more weeks. We usually meet on a Sunday for about an hour-ish. Just hang out, work on our project, chit-chat. It's a really safe, warm, uh, welcoming space that I think if you, if that sounds like a project you want to be working on, I'll show mine uh, or what I have so far in a little bit. Um, please join us if you are not following her on Insta or you're signed up for her newsletter. I would suggest doing both. All the information to the meetups are in both of those places. Um, yeah, and it's been such a great time. Like I said, we have two more weeks of that. So yeah, if you feel like you want to join in, please join in. I know one of the members in the group, she completed hers in eight days. So it's doable. I know you're like, oh, but it's only two more week, two more weeks. It's doable. Um, the pattern was, I'll talk about that in a little bit <laughs> since I'm going to be showing mine. Other than that, things have been uh, kind of a whirlwind here in my little outside universe that's not on YouTube. 
Um, things are picking up for us. We're actually going to be heading into the theater soon, which is uh, why, well not why, I had to work all weekend. So I wasn't able to sit down and record anything, so I'm putting this out on a Monday. And to be honest, just looking ahead at my schedule with shows and stuff coming up, um, I think these might still come out every two weeks, but on a Monday instead of a Saturday, unless I get, um, I don't have to work one of the shows. So we'll see. Either way, be patient. I'm still going to be putting out episodes. It's just it'll, either it'll be over the weekend or it'll be on a Monday when I have a little bit, a little bit more time to um, put things out. Hence why this is coming out on a Monday today. I forgot where I was going with my train of thought, but um, yeah. Anywho, I think that's it. Oh, if you would like to follow me. <laughs> Oh my God, what am I doing? Um, bless you all for sticking around and staying, watching this train wreck. Um, if you would like to follow me on any, any other social media, you can follow me on Instagram, I'm Peace for Peace Crafting, and over on Ravelry, I'm Peace for Peace Craft. There's also a Spotify playlist for this group. Uh, it's the Peace for Peace Crafting podcast playlist over on Spotify. It's a collaborative playlist where you can, a week after this episode goes out, it's open, people can add songs to it. And then the second week before I record the next one, I close it just because that's what we do around here. Uh, and over in Ravelry, there's a group for this channel <laughs> if you would like to join that as well. Okay, now I think that's everything. Goodness gracious. All right, you all, so. Uh, it's been two weeks. I've had some crafting time. Some things didn't get as much love. Other things got more love. And that's okay because I'm just working on what makes me happy. So um, no FOs today, but a ton of whips, a little bit of piecemeal, um, and a music rec, obviously. So first thing I wanted to do is a lot of people last in the, for the last episode, mentioned that they wanted me to show my shawlography, I almost said slip stravaganza, my shawlography once it was blocked. So, it's blocked. And I just wanted to show it off real quick. I won't go through the colors or anything. I'll do that again because I have another project that I'm working on with them. But, let me make sure I don't knock things over. Here it is all blocked out. What, what? I know I'm covering my face, my bad. Um, so this is the shawl all blocked out. It looks way cool. Um, my crisscrosses really relaxed and they look much better than they did before they were blocked. And the brioche looks really awesome. And I love this wedge section. I was thinking the other night, like this first section, this wedge section would be so cool as the yoke of a sweater. I don't really know if I have those skills to make something like that up, but that would be so awesome, just as like the yoke of a sweater. So this is it, it looks great. I'll put it on really quick, even though I'm wearing a sweater, because it is chile here. Here it is on, all blocked out. It's super fun. I feel like, maybe I said this before and then I've been watching some other podcasters who've been talking about this as well. Like, it's look when just laid out is a little bit like, whoa, that's a whole lot. But then when you have it on, it's just like a bunch of fun different textures and yummy goodness. And I loves it. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, really happy with how it turned out. It blocked out so well. There was a ton of yarn left over. Uh, and I know, oh, I can't remember who it is. Someone's doing like a, a make along right now for like socks to match your shawl. So using all the leftover bits that we had from this to make a pair of socks for yourself. 
I think that's a really cool idea. I'm using mine for something else, but yeah, I'm so happy with it. I, I just, I love it. It's an art piece. Um, I'm sure it won't get worn as much as some other things I have, but it will definitely, actually, maybe I'll wear it today. Um, it will definitely get some love. I still need to take some like FO photos of it and post that online. So maybe that'll happen this week too, if I have a little bit of time. But that's my finished shawl. Really excited about it. Um, love all the other variations of it that I've been seeing. Yeah, you know, like you pick your own palette and you make it your own. It's great. Uh, because I know people will ask, I'm wearing my Montrealer sweater today. I'm not gonna stand up, but I did mine with the um, little kangaroo pocket. This is a sweater pullover hoodie, whatever you want to call it, by uh, Vincent, who is by Dells on Instagram, uh, one half of Lake Garçon. And yeah, this is probably one of my most worn sweaters just because it's so easy to throw on over a t-shirt and head out, especially since it's getting cooler. I throw this on, put my jacket on. If I'm in the office, like I still feel warm. Um, I added, I know I talked about this sweater before, but I added... My contrast stripe, which is just here, I added it in a couple other places. So around the hood, the sleeves, it's the lining of the pocket. Oh my gosh, I can't find words today. I can never find words. Uh, just to give it a little bit more of a pop. Absolutely love this thing. Really dope, really awesome, good times. All right, shall we start this whip parade? Okay, so where to start, where to start, where to start, where to start, where to start. First up, my socks that I'm working on. Now, I'll be really honest, I wasn't giving these much love, or as much love as I wanted to, but I did make some progress on them. So these are, you all don't laugh at this pattern, it's just, it's really had a time. So these, oh, I can't even show this. I can't show it because I don't have the first page. What a hot mess. Okay, they're the zigzagular socks. I'll link the pattern below. And I'm using Fiber Punk yarn in the color Love, which I didn't say last time. Um, so this is self-striping. Here's where I am on those. So these are for my roommate. Oh, here's a little zigzag. If you open it up, you can see they're um, like on opposite sides of the socks. Um, so these are for my roommate. And so these are 64 stitches on a US one, doing them two at a time, toe up. The pattern is written uh, top down. I'm just following the chart for the zigzags um, and just doing them toe up because it's pretty much the same everywhere else. I'm gonna do an afterthought heel on these, a cut in afterthought heel. And when I measured them last, I'm only a couple stripes from marking off where that will be and then I can finish doing the leg. Now, normally I like to bring socks on the bus with me while I'm commuting, but because these have a little cable and I'm using just like an extra um, stitch marker, um, like one of those, like, I don't know what they're called. It's, it's not a light bulb, but it's the other ones, the plastic ones, a locking one. There you go. Oh my gosh. Um, I, when I get to <laughs> the row where I have to do the cabling, um, I usually will just like hold it in my mouth while I'm going and then do the cable, put it, you know what I mean? Just like, so I'm not setting it down. It's easier for me. I can't do that on the bus because <laughs> I'm wearing a mask. Like I took these and I tried just like put it, put the little stitch marker in my bag, take it out. It was too much for me. I couldn't deal with it. So I, these have become like a home project. But I haven't given them much love, but I do absolutely like, I'm so jazzed about the colors. I think they look really boss. And my roommate, she like saw them. Um, 
just sitting like on our coffee table and she was like these are gonna be amazing I cannot wait for you to finish them so over the next two weeks I got to show these some more love actually since it's gonna be a holiday here in the States we have Thanksgiving coming up so I'll have a couple days off from work um, I'm gonna give all of these things a lot of love <laughs> um, yeah, and hopefully this whip parade will be like an FO parade the next time we sit down and chat and hang out together. So those are my socks. I'm absolutely loving them. That zigzagular pattern, all the patterns will be linked below if you have never made them before. I think I've done like three or four pair now. Great sock pattern. I think it's so much fun. I have yet to make myself a pair, which is kind of wild. I'm always making them as gifts for other people. Um, so hopefully soon I will make myself a pair of those because I really want some because they're so cute. I'm not really like a patterny, patterny person. Like I see all these beautiful socks with like all this lace and fun stuff and that's not really my jam. But these, because it's just a simple cable, I feel like I could totally rock those and not worry about possibly <laughs> snagging them. While I'm putting them on, I'm just wearing them out throughout the day. So for sure, I'm going to make myself a pair of those because I want some. And hopefully that'll happen soon. All right, next up. Let's do this. Um, next, we have in this lovely bearded pearl bag. Um, so I said before there was a ton of yarn left over from the shawlography. And so I... I'm working on a test knit for a friend who is doing a hat pattern. And sorry, the yarn is getting all tangled around the little things. So I'm using all the colors plus a black, just some nitpick stroll is my black. And then the rest of my colors are the Hothouse Flower, Zest, Scion. A uh, touch of gray and silvery moon. Woof, that was a that was like a stretch <laughs> trying to grab back and get all of those. So I've shown these colors before, um, and you just saw them in my in my shawl. But this is the um, this is a test knit for Zach of Knit Nat Knit. I can never, it's like, I can read it and say it in my head. Sorry, Zach. Knit, knack, chat. What's that? I'll link his um, podcast below too. Uh, so he is, um, I'm testing a brioche hat pattern for him. This is called the Valleys and Ridges or Ridges and Valleys. I don't have the paper in front of me. I want to say it's Valleys and Ridges. Hat. So it has a little garter brim and then goes into some fun brioche now I'm loving it so far I just kept my gray and used it as my first color for the brioche and then I on a stripe it so the zest was my next color and then this next darker darker gray is the um, touch no is the silvery moon color and actually the striping looks better on here than it does just when I'm looking at it. So this is the outside of the hat. The inside, because it's brioche, so it's like sort of reversible, we'll have the grays and the stripes be on, be more prominent. It's a really cool pattern. I'm enjoying it so far. I will confess that I didn't have um, US threes like on a fixed circular or for my interchangeable needles. And so usually because I have to go up regardless of who's writing the pattern, because I have a big head, um, I was like, oh, it's fine. Like I'll just do it on the next size up for the two, um, for the two needles that are called for in the pattern. Um, and I got this far. <laughs> And I think I'm going to, you're hearing it here first, 
I think I'm gonna rip it all out and do the bottom on just straight needles and then put them on a circular needle and go back and redo this. I like the, I think the, the fabric is fine, but it's not my favorite. And I think that has nothing to do with the pattern. That has to do with me going up a needle size when this time I shouldn't have. <laughs> so um, it shouldn't take me too long uh, because I have done brioche before and um, the, the pattern's super easy to follow. And also, I will finish it by the time it's supposed to be done. So, again, the holiday coming up, um, I'm hoping to rip this out and start it over again, which I know is a little bit of a bummer, but also you all like, it's just yarn, it's fine. I was thinking to just keep going and then give it to a friend who has hair. <laughs> bigger hair than mine. And then I was like, nah, I want this for myself because I feel like it's gonna end up being pretty dope and um, it'll be fun to wear it with the shawl just like out and about to have a matching hat to go with it. It's not taking up too much yarn either. So I feel like I'll still be able to do something with the leftovers, which is kind of bananas to think that I'll probably be able to get a shawl, a hat and one other thing out of all the yarn that was used for that. That's kind of crazy. Anyway, this hat, um, I believe, should be out sometime next month, so in December. Um, so for sure, the next episode, I will be excited to show this to you all then. So that's my test knit. I'm enjoying it so much. It's a good time. All right, next, we're just gonna keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Next up. So I know I said that I was doing the Grounded Poncho by Denise Byron. And this is a hack pattern, hacked pattern, that's what she calls it. Um, this, so the ponchette was originally in, what issue was this? Number 10 of Lina Lane. I've heard people pronounce it both ways. When I did a search, like on Googs and that's Google. Um, and did like the pronunciation thing. It said Lina, so I'm gonna say that. Anyway, it was in the 10th issue, winter issue. And it's this little, let me see if I can find just a photo of the little ponchette. It's so cute. Actually flipping back through this, I was like, I forgot that I wanted to make a couple sweaters that are in here too, because they're pretty fire. Um, so this is the little ponchette. It's just a little cover up with three colors. Um, so there's, in this sample, there's like this brownish and then gray and then white is, or I guess it's more of a like oatmeal-y color. Um, yeah, you can see here, she's wearing it down there, the other way. Uh, so this is like a hacked version of it because now the pattern is released for it as an individual download. So you can get it on its own without buying the entire magazine if you wish. So I'm doing mine in a worsted weight on US 7s. And here's where I am so far. So this is gonna be a gift knit. And I actually think I'm at the place where I can start um, just finishing this one section or this one panel, but I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because it's a gift knit and I feel like a poncho can be sort of any size and like it's fine, you know? Um, let me make sure it's not falling. So, oh, let me talk about the yarn I'm using. The yarn I'm using first. No, I'll do this. I'm so scatterbrained, I'm sorry, I apologize. So here's the lace section or panel so far that I have so far. Let me pull this. So here's one side of it. So it will lay stunning. Uh, and I think I'm going to add one more, which is the next size up in the pattern. And I'm using this really beautiful um, yarn that was sent to me. Shout out to Knit Picks. So this color is quail. And 
This is in their um, high desert worsted and it's 270 yards per 100 grams. And it's 100% US grown and spun yarn. It's 100% um, wool. So that's the quail color is, my, is gonna be my lace. And then the back, the second panel, which is like a, a CD stitch looking number is gonna be this, it's pretty much black, but it's called Lava Fields. And then the collar is going to be this, uh, what's the name of it? This Cottonwood. So it'll be darker on one side, lighter for the collar, and then the quail color um, for the lace. I'm loving this. If you've watched my channel for a while, then you know I love Denise. I love her patterns. It's been so fun moderating um, the Zoom calls, getting to see some old friends, people I would consider friends now because they've done a few of the make-alongs with us and participated. Just in like sharing in that community has been so lovely and getting to sit and chat with people again. So the, f the first panel is lace and it um, changes direction so there's right leaning and left leaning and then it will finish off um, with a little garter at the top to match the um, edging on all of it but I think it's really beautiful I think it's gonna block out a ton so the person that I'm giving it to um, it'll definitely fall past their elbows which is like a vibe I think they will really love um, yeah, it's just such a good pattern. I can't say enough about it. Again, like we have two more weekends for meeting up on Zoom. A couple people, not a couple, one person finished theirs in eight days because you're using um, a heavier weight. I think the original pattern calls for a fingering. So I'm doing mine in worsted. I'm pretty sure Denise on her Instagram, when she showed the one that she did, she did hers in worsted too. Someone else in the group is doing DK. So you can really just like, play around with um, whatever weight you have just like in your stash if you want um, and make a fabric that is lovely to you i didn't swatch for this because i was like oh it's an accessory it'll be fine and now now i'm questioning my decisions but i <laughs> i think it's gonna be fine and i think it's it will have the look that i want it to have uh in the end so it's totally fine. I love it. This yarn is so nice to work with. The stitch definition is crazy. It's super soft, really squishy. So I can't wait to see what the the, the kind of fabric it makes for the back panel. Um, and then the collar, I think it's just some ribbing that will be really beautiful as well. So this is my grounded poncho slowly coming up. Although I've been working on that a lot lately, actually. It's been my evening, just like sit down, knock out like a, a whole panel of the lace um, in the evenings, which has been really great. Yeah, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, last thing, last thing, last thing is, so because my socks, <laughs> Where, like, not a fail, but just, like, it, I didn't feel comfortable working on them while I was on the bus anymore. I decided to take my botanic shawl with me. And this has become my, like, while you're on the bus knitting. Um, so if you haven't seen, let me find a picture. You all, the, the abuse <laughs> that this pattern has taken from being in this bag, me pulling it out, me stuffing it back in this bag. Oof. So this is the Botanic Shawl. It's a Stephen West. Um, it's hilarious. Like, it's so disrespectful. I'm sorry to this pattern. Um, I am using Knit Picks Chroma, uh, which is worse, no, it's the fingering and it just like fades on its own which is really awesome it's a single ply so it feels looks like hand spun which is really cool and i'm and this is called drawing room and then my main so this is my contrast color my main color is um this nitpick stroll in ash so this gray 
And here, y'all, I know that I've said on here before, like my commute can be long. So the progress that I have on this is kind of wild. Here, I'm gonna try to set my bag down. Um, all right, make sure things aren't gonna fall. So here's how this is turning out. Let me find where I was last time. And now it's stuck on my back. <laughs> One second. Oh, all right. This is going back in my lap. All right, here's where I am. You ready? Here's where I was last time. So I had done just like the tail end of it to that marker. And now this, and it's a little scrunched up is where I am now. So, do we loves it? I am obsessed. It's such a relaxing knit. It's like, while I'm on the bus, if I have music on or I'm listening to a podcast, um, my commute can be anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on traffic. Um, I just have time to like sit and work on it, especially if I get a window seat. Oh, don't even get me started. Um, and I love it. So, as I put this over my head and then I feel the stitches start falling, little needle. So, I got through one ball of the chroma, so the, the contrast color. And then I connected the second one um, just to keep going, which I thought that it was going to continue on with the pattern, but it's giving me more blues in one section or just a bigger like striping of the blues. And I don't mind that at all. I still think it's really beautiful. It's really cool, which I'm hoping, oh, this was, why didn't I do this in the first place? Hold it this way. Um, I don't even remember where I joined it. It, I think it's like where more the blue, like somewhere around here, I think. Um, I absolutely love it. I'm only, I'm on the last, what's wrong with the, oh. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing stitches that look weird. I don't like that. Um, so I am almost done with the last repeat of this and I can start the border, which um, when I looked ahead a little bit, the border, isn't hard at all. It's just it's it's just all knitting, which is going to be even more relaxing. So this is also going into my like you have time some time off for the holiday. You should be working on all these things. And I think I'm saying it here first. Like literally, I'm having this thought come to my head um, while we're chatting. Sorry, I'm trying to untangle the yarn because it's stuck in my bag. Um, Maybe I'll designate a day for each thing. Like, whatever. Friday, you're gonna just work on this. Saturday, you're just gonna work on this. Sunday, you're just gonna work on this. So maybe I'll try and do that and see how much I can plow through. Because then the following weekend, is that true? Yeah, then the following weekend, I'll be in the theater um, because we open. I won't be performing. <laughs> the students I teach will be performing. Um, so I'll probably have a little bit of time, like intermission or when there's a little bit of downtime in the show, before the show maybe, uh, to work on some projects as well. So this is my botanic shawl. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm super excited about it. This is also a gift knit. Remember how one time I was like, I don't really do gift knits for the holidays. That lasted not very long. And it's also not true. <laughs> Last year I ended up making stuff for my cousin to give away as gifts. So this will be a gift knit as well. So the only thing that I've shown today that I'm keeping is that hat that I'm gonna undo and redo. Uh, two bits of piecemeal. One I can't show you because uh, it's a wool advent calendar that a friend so graciously sent to me. I got, my roommate came up with this big box and I was like, what is that? He's like, I don't know, it's for you though. It's huge. And like, we were going to work 
And then the next day I was tired and then finally I opened it and I was like, oh my gosh. And they sent me a message on Instagram like, did you get it? Are you so excited? And I'm like, this is crazy. Thank you so much. So to the person who sent it and you're watching because I didn't get permission to give your name. Thank you. It's really dope. So it's just 12 little packages with one ounce of fiber in them. And then I assume that the last bigger one is like a full braid of fiber. I have no idea because I'm not going to open them. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is open them every other day um, on the odd days of the month. And then I think that will put me at opening the last one on Christmas, which is really cool. Um, it's from Wolf. Wolfiend? Wolfiend um, is who the advent is from. So definitely by the next episode, I'll have um, some of that fiber to show you all, which I'm so excited to open up. Like, I'm not really like a, oh, I have this, let me open it and spoil it for myself early type of person. Like, if you've been watching, you know that I will knit something and then not weaving the ends for like two weeks or a month, <laughs> never wearing this item. Just because I'm like, oh yeah, it's done, it's fine, it's whatever. So for me to get this advent, I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. Yes, I'm really excited about it, but like, I'm not in a rush to open them. Like, I have patience. I work with kids. I gotta be patient. <laughs> so I'm super excited to open up that. The second thing is something that I wanted to show you all last time, but didn't have it in here. Um, this is also from a viewer. Um, and they sent me a little package with Okay, I've never seen anything like this. This is Imaginit, I'm gonna say. Um, and it's, ne this is the Nebula yarn and it's 100% neoprene and it's, how many, 16 yards for 100 grams, y'all. And the color's peach. What? I'm shooketh. So it's really cool because it's just, I mean, it's stretchy. It's neoprene. It's like rubbery. It's crazy. And it also came with a little pattern to make like a little container. It doesn't have a photo on the pattern, so I would hold it up, but it's just a pattern. So thank you so much for sending this over. This was really dope. When I got this, again, I was like, what is this package? Like, why are, what is this? And then opened it and was like, oh, this is gonna be really cool. So I think I'm gonna, just gonna try the pattern that's in here. It looks to be, oh, it's a crochet pattern. So that's cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a whirl. I've never worked with anything like this before and I think it's pretty awesome um, and if, the pattern doesn't work out because I can't figure it out, which shouldn't be a problem. It seems like a, a pretty simple crochet pattern. Um, I'll just make a basket out of it, because why not? So thank you to that person as well. That's so sweet. Um, really excited to get to work with this as well. All right, I think <laughs> that is it for me for this episode. Um, again, you can do all that fun youtube -y stuff, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell so that you can get notified of future episodes. Um, yeah, the last thing is a music recommendation. And I feel like it's only fitting that it's going to be this album because it just came out and I'm super excited about it and I know maybe others are super excited about it too. So my recommendation this week obviously is going to be look you all it's still in like the plastic i just like gently opened it i haven't even listened to it yet well listen to the records yet i've listened to the album multiple times this is the adele 30 album sorry i'll try to get it so that the light from my window is not making a glare uh this is adele's newest album it came out three days ago i've listened to it on streaming services too many times and I love it I know some people are like oh she always makes the same type of music but like don't do that it's beautiful her songwriting is amazing um, as always there's like a bunch of different feels on the album which is really great I personally am not gonna recommend any songs in particular but 
for the playlist, I will add like the single that came from it, Easy On Me. I'll put that in the playlist, even though I'm sure everyone's heard it already. But if you haven't, it's there for you. Um, I say give the whole album a listen. It's kind of a lot sometimes, I won't <laughs> lie, but it's really beautiful. Um, she's great. I appreciate artists who take their time to release music sometimes. Like I know it can be like, oh, we want something, we want something, we want something, but if you're not um, part of the machine that's just like putting out um, like a hit factory where you get like two great singles and then the rest of the album is trash, I shouldn't say trash. I will say trash. Or they're just not like as good as the singles, right? Because the purpose of them releasing it is just for the singles. Um, I enjoy artists that put, not to say that I won't listen to those singles, but um, I do enjoy <laughs> artists that will put out a full body of work that you can listen to the whole thing. This album's great. Totally go and give it a listen to if you haven't already. I think it's really great. She's so fabulous. Just love it. If you caught her one night only, that was on TV here in America. I think it aired other places too. Um, you should totally check that out. Also, I in a link below, there was an SNL skit, I think when her last album came out, that was like, sort of like Adele Saves Thanksgiving or whatever. It's pretty funny, I'll link it below if you all just need a laugh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that is it for me this episode. I hope all of you are doing well. For those in America who we have Thanksgiving holiday coming up, I hope you spend some time uh, with your family in whatever capacity. Um, small gatherings online or in person or online, uh, Friendsgivings. Yeah, just like sharing that love and community with each other. And if you're not in America, I hope you are just eating something good and having a great life. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I'm hoping to, like I said in the beginning, I'm hoping to. Um, Continue doing these every two weeks, but since uh, I'm going to be in the theater with shows and stuff, that might change how I'm able to put things out. So maybe it'll come out on a Saturday, maybe it'll come out on a Monday. Apologizing in advance. But until I see you all next time, I hope everyone stays safe and well. And yeah, I'll see you soon. And in the meantime, make a peace, spread some peace. Peace. <laughs>